it gets a lot worse before it even starts to get better. Peeking out at something that has him feeling like he's floating outside his body, watching on in confused disinterest as insane dreams streak past him like supersonic debris. Nothing makes sense. He sees memories and confuses them for hallucinations. Nightmares that he swears are real, stumbles through it all in a sweltering heat he can't escape because it's coming from him this time. I think I'm dying. I don't want to die. Tubbo morosely tells Techno where they're standing outside HQ on a balcony overlooking the Red Giant. Empty space brushing against the exposed skin of his face like careful fingers. And Techno snorts, looks at him with one red eye and one green. You're not gonna die. You're strong enough to get through this. All I ever wanted to do was to fly, but I don't know if it even matters. He says to Tommy, stepping fast and light over a gilded insignia on the ground, knows that if it touches him, this game he's playing is all over, and Tommy hums softly in warping echoes, black wings spreading out behind him. Don't say that. You have an amazing gift. You're the most incredible pilot I've ever known, Tubbo. I've never told anyone, but it's lonely sometimes. Being out here, I... I wish I wasn't so alone. Tubbo sighs, leaning on the porch railing of his childhood home, the twisting, fiery bands of Osiren curling through the night sky, and his mother runs a hand across his back, gold-capped horns catching in the light as she whispers like the void. Me too. Sometimes, though, his head clears enough and Tubbo knows where he is, lets Ronbu prop him up and sluggishly drinks bits of nectar that he never wants to finish. Only reason he does, because Ronbu won't let him go back to sleep until he's drained the pouch. I don't like you. He grumbles around the plastic straw where Ronbu's poked it back into his mouth, and Ronbu snorts behind him, hand dropping away slower than necessary, tones scathing. Trust me, the feeling is mutual. But he shifts Tubbo when he winces, helps get the pressure off his left side, even though it means he's more or less resting completely on Ronbu. And Tubbo always sighs, relaxing back into the chill he radiates like a bulkhead wall. Falls asleep easily every time. He doesn't have room in his head to parse it, but Tubbo always sleeps better after that, where he's drifted off next to Ronbu. Dreams about the swirling, oil slick of nebulas passing over his viewport, slipping past his hands like steam curling out of warm drinks. Sees stars glow silver and gold in front of him, trailing out of his fingers where he swipes them across the sky, scattering them like glowing specks of glitter that bob and weave in the night. He'll glance over in his cockpit every time, looking for someone, and the seat's usually empty. But sometimes, there's a piece of void sitting there, glowing stars for eyes, and stardust dripping down from long ears, and it'll smile at him, hesitant and small, but real. Eventually, though, Tubbo's fever breaks, and he wakes up clear-headed one morning when gray light is filtering in through a gap in the cargo bay door, rolls over and groans at the way he feels like he's had the shit kicked out of him. Sitting up gingerly, he lifts the hem of his shirt and twists to get a better look at the blaster wound, relieved to see it looking a more normal pink color around the even sutures. Tubbo traces careful fingers across the edges of it, amazed when there's no pain at all, just the dulled sensation of his fingertips tickling along his skin. Tips his head up and finds Ronbu asleep across the cargo bay. Blankets wrapped around his shoulders, and pillows stuffed under his head where he's resting against the side of some crates. Next to him are neat little rows of things, and Tubbo's eyes track over them, picking them out to be various medical supplies. Gauze pads and disinfectants, a few bottles of fever reducers, pouches of nectar, anything he could possibly need to take care of Tubbo, organized nicely and within reach. And his heart turns over in his chest 
eyes snapping back up to Rondu's sleep lax face. He could have left. There are plenty of other pilots on Immuna that could have taken him to Nerox. And he has the money to pay for it. Could have caught a ride with literally anybody else. But he stayed. He stayed. And he's here still. And has been taking care of Tubbo this entire time for some reason. Tubbo swallows past the lump in his throat. Fingers twisting in the blanket puddled in his lap. And it's the good one. The extra soft, pale yellow one that has hexagons picked out on it in a darker shade stares over at where Ronbu is propped up uncomfortably in a corner, out like a light with the scratchy gray blanket around his shoulders. It's probably not a smart idea, but Tubbo hauls himself up the ladder to the top deck very carefully, blasts off days' worth of space crud and the smell of sickness in the sonic shower, Ruffles hands through his floofed hair, trying to get it to behave. He changes into the last set of clean clothes he has, and tamps a new med patch over his wound. Slides back down the ladder into the hold, and finds Ronbu still sound asleep. Stepping over quietly, Tubbo crouches down and peers at his face. And now that he's closer, he can make out the dark smudges under Ronbu's eyes the stress lines in between his brows. Has he been sleeping at all while watching over you? And Tubbo reaches out without thinking, brushes away some hair falling over his eyes. Ronbu makes a noise in his sleep, tilting his head after the touch, and Tubbo runs careful fingers over his hair once, tucking the loose strands behind one long ear. Hey, Ronbu, Tubbo murmurs moving his hand to gently shake his shoulder, lips twitching up at the whiny little noise he makes in protest. Hey. Wakey-wakey, sleeping beauty. The searing red of his left eye slits open briefly before both are snapping wide, and Rambu sits up, suddenly very awake, hands reaching out for Tubbo like they're afraid he's going to collapse. Y you're up! How, how are you feeling? Do you... Is there something... does anything hurt? I'm fine. I'm fine. I, uh, feel a lot better, actually. Kind of sore, but I'll live. Tubbo says with a shrug, and Ronbu's hand drops back to his side quickly as he nods. Good. That's good. I'm really glad. Did you, um... did you need something, though? Tubbo scrubs a hand through his hair flicks his eyes to the side and tries to sound unbothered when he says, I... I was wondering... I've just... haven't really eaten in a while and I was... D do you want to grab breakfast or something? You... want me... to go get food with you. Embarrassment flares hot in his face, and Tubbo digs his fingers into the back of his neck. Of course he doesn't want to go with you. What were you thinking? He's a prince, and you're a nobody going nowhere. Uh, I mean, you don't have to if you don't want to. I was just... N no. No, no, I want... I mean, food sounds good. Yeah. Let's go, um... Let's go do that, the food thing. Rambu stammers, and his shoulders bunch up around his ears. Tubbo only noticing, then, he still got one hand resting on Ronbu slides it off fast and gets to his feet, hopping back a couple steps to give him room to get up. Yeah, okay, cool. Cool, 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 yeah, that's, um... Yeah, let's, uh, go. The streets of Immuna are quieter in the morning, air icy with the remnants of night, not warmed up yet by the sun glowing pale on the horizon. And Tubbo blows hot air out of his mouth just to watch it fog feels frost nip at his nose and sucks in deep breaths of chilly dawn air. His side is still bothering him, and he's a little light-headed, but nothing compared to earlier, and Tebo truly, sincerely relishes every second of their cold morning walk to find breakfast, squints happily at the sun rising in the sky and the wind hitting his face, smiles into the collar of his jacket at the tail thudding in the back of his wing every so often. Most of the people they pass look like locals, 
either on their way to other jobs or setting up their stalls for any early stragglers fresh out of the ports. And when Tubbo sees what appears to be a large group of manufacturer plant workers stepping out of a doorway, he nudges Ronbu in that direction. Pro tip when visiting other places. He begins as they duck through the automatic door after it swishes open, letting them into a small, humble-looking tavern. But there's something in the air that has Tubbo's mouth watering immediately. Always go eat wherever there are the most locals, especially if it looks like they do manual labor. And he's not wrong. The food is incredible, and they sit up at the counter together, Tubbo tearing wildly through dumplings packed with stewed, salty hot greens, hums happily at the first real food he's had in days. Rambu's a lot more reserved, where he chews delicately through his meat buns, but after his first bite, he slits his eyes shut and makes that trilling noise Tubbo's only heard maybe once before. So, um, I just wanted to say thanks for looking after me, I guess. Tubbo says while picking at a few leftover scraps of dough, feet tapping an uneasy beat into the stool's rungs below him. I... you didn't have to, but I really appreciate that you did. Oh, um, yeah, uh, of course. Rompu sounds a bit hesitant, and Tubbo turns to look at him, sees how his eyebrows are drawn together, confused set to his face, like he's trying to solve some puzzle. And when they lock eyes, Rompu jerks his gaze away. I, well, you're welcome. That's weird, Tubbo thinks. Can't get it out of his head the way Rambu looks slightly alarmed, like he was worried this puzzle he was trying to solve had a high chance of blowing up in his face. And it descends into an awkward silence, Tubbo shredding the remainder of his dough with restless fingers. I... He starts, hesitates before asking, You okay? Takes one look at Rambu's tense shoulders and decides against it. Sighs instead. You ever heard of the hands of God? And that's all it takes. Has Ronbu swiveling wide eyes at him, and their conversation begins to flow more easily. They talk about space, about intergalactic phenomena that makes Ronbu's ears wiggle in excitement. Sometimes drift into explanations about engine blocks that Tubbo waves his hands around trying to illustrate. Get into principles of physics and history, and all of the wild places that exist. It doesn't matter what topic Tubbo brings up, but Rambu will know something about it, and it's not just surface-level facts. He has a pretty good understanding on a vast swath of things, speaks with confidence and the assured manner of someone who does know what they're talking about, and Tubbo boggles at how much Rambu knows. Queens, how do you even remember all this? He asks, licking the last of the dumplings' juices from his fingers, and Rambu shrugs like it's no big deal like he hasn't been perfectly recalling things Tubbo has told him in passing, or reciting what sounds like flawless academic notation. I have an eidetic memory. I can't forget anything. It comes in handy, I guess. Seriously? Shit, that's really cool. Tubbo huffs, sleepily props his head up in one hand, and says around a yawn, You're kinda awesome, you know that? I suppose... Rambu says quietly, taking his hands off the countertop and tucking them in his lap. Back a single, stiff, long line as he looks at Tubbo out of the corner of his eye. Its green depths, empty and dull. You were saying about coupling coils and kinetic energy loss, though? Sorry, but could you explain it again? I'm afraid I'm still a little confused. It's not even an elegant topic change, but Tubbo can take a hint though he's confused by it, taps his feet into the rungs of Ronbu's stool and says easily, Sure. Okay, so the coupling's coils are what keep the rotators moving at an energy neutral instead of at a deficit, which is super beneficial for spaceflight because... Tebo's not an idiot. He knows Ronbu doesn't need any clarification, that he understood him perfectly the first time. He's only asking in an attempt to shift the attention off himself. And as Tubbo rehashes his earlier explanation, 
he realizes how much Rambu does that. He is quick to distract whoever he's talking to with questions about themselves that'll put him out of the spotlight. And it's absolutely bizarre, because Tubbo thought he had Rambu all figured out. Thought he wasn't anything more than a spoiled, self-centered prince who had never wanted for anything. That he believed the whole universe rotated around him. But he doesn't think that's the case anymore. There's something really off about how Rambu interacts with him. Like he's not exactly sure what he should be saying or doing. Deflects questions and comments that seem innocent enough, but have him clamming up faster than anything. Always eyes Tubbo with distrust, like he's looking for what he really means. A compliment about his intelligence should not have Rambu reacting like this. Like he's trying to find the hidden insult behind the words. And for the life of him, Tubbo cannot figure out why he's like this. He understands being emotionally reserved, keeping things private, but Rambu goes into conversations with him like it's an attack that he's got to try and figure out how to survive. It doesn't make any sense. He's a prince, grew up with everything he could ever want, would have been swamped with servants and courtiers from birth. And if Tubbo's remembering right, he has like six, seven siblings, so his family would have been there as he was growing up. So why does it feel like something's gone sideways about him? The market is busier by the time they leave the little tavern, and Tubbo wanders around without real purpose, doesn't really want to go back to the Asachi just yet, after he was cooped up inside for so long, trails along behind Ronbu with his hands in his pockets. Ronbu's acting like a person again, tail swishing behind him as his head swivels back and forth while he surveys the stalls, ears jumping all the way up sometimes but they always flick back down into a more neutral position relatively quickly, like he's wary about anyone seeing his excitement. What does that to someone? Tubbo wonders, watching Rambu try and rein his more exuberant reactions in, feet stuttering across the ground when he passes stalls, as if he isn't allowing himself to show interest in things. Like, it's not even social awkwardness. It's something else. Something worse. Rambu seems to finally notice Tubbo isn't beside him, and spins around quickly looking for him. And when their eyes meet, when Rambu sees whatever expression he must be making, he uncoils, nothingness slipping over his face like a mask, like a set of armor. And Tubbo's fingers curl harshly into his palms. What happened to you? Is everything all right? Rambu asks politely when he's made his way back to Tubbo, hands folded neatly behind him as he inclines his head. Are you feeling okay? I shouldn't have walked ahead while you're recovering, that's my mistake. Or did you perhaps see something you were interested in? What don't you want me to know? Tubbo thinks, looking up into his horribly blank eyes, can't help remembering wanderlust burning in them like the hottest of star cores where they sat side by side on the dusty ground, is suddenly desperate to get whatever this is out of them. It, it's fine. It, I'm good, promise. Tubbo says quietly, scuffs the toe of his boot into the dirt, and tries to think of something to snap Ronbu out of it. Quirks his lips up when a particularly dumb-sounding idea pops into his head. I, um, I actually wanted to tell you something. Of course. Rambu says evenly, but his arms twitch ever so slightly, like he's digging his claws into his palms, scared over whatever he thinks it is Tubbo's going to tell him. And it's stupid and impulsive and really childish, but Tubbo slaps a hand into Rambu's chest and calls, Tag, you're it! He hops back a couple steps, bounces on the balls of his feet, and waits for Rambu to move. And as expected, he doesn't, but surprise actually cracks through his emotionless mask, has his brows drawing down. I... what? Well, Tag is... Tubbo draws out with a shit-eating grin. Laughs when Rambu jabs a finger at him, more life bleeding back into his body as he snaps. I swear to the ancients, if you explain what tag is to me, then what's the hold up, boo boy? 
Tebo snickers, jumping to the side playfully, rocking up on his toes and flares his wings behind him. You afraid of getting absolutely destroyed? Of course not, you little... Okay, no. No. No, we're not doing this. You, sir, are injured and are just coming off of a two-day fever. Rambu says, cutting his hand through the air emphatically, tail lashing around his legs. And Tubbo grins like a fiend, mocking. Sounds like someone's a pussy-ass bitch. I am not. Y you need to be resting. Rambu squawks, eyebrows shooting all the way up his forehead in indignation. And Tubbo could let it go now, agree with him and go back to the Asachi, satisfied that he's knocked Ronbu out of his own head. But he's having fun teasing him, actually. Kind of wants to play tag now. Mmm, hear that? Tubbo croons, cocking his head into the wind like he's listening for something, and grins wide at Ronbu, whose shoulders are bunching up by his ears, cups his hands around his mouth as he shouts, Sounds like someone's a pussy-ass bitch! He jumps back, cackling, when Ronbu lunges for him, spins on his heel and takes off at a sprint, ducking around people with well-practiced ease body instinctually moving in the thrill of the chase. Tabo knows he needs to be careful with his side, can feel it twinging and pulling as he runs, but it's bearable, and he doesn't go all out. Figures Rambu isn't going to be able to keep up with him anyway. So Tabo is really, genuinely surprised when Rambu snaps into existence right in front of him, and it's only rotations of smuggler-honed reflexes that have him throwing himself back in time. Rambu's claws skimming barely an inch over his front. What the shit? He's in the middle of exclaiming, when Rambu's gone again, disappearing in a spray of particles, and he has the split-second realization of, oh, right, teleporter, before his antenna feels something shift in the air, and there's a quiet pop behind him. Tebo's wings snap open faster than he can think, get him in the air right as the rush of something moving fast brushes past him and he zooms out of reach of Ronbu's lanky arm, the Endyrian making an irritated sound in the back of his throat. That's cheating! Ronbu shouts, planting his hands firmly on his hips, but it looks like he's smiling, and Tubbo can't help grinning back, sticks his tongue out. You started it! Ronbu huffs and shakes his head, and Tubbo floats a little closer, crosses his lower arms and puts one of his upper hands on his face in a thinking position. Aw, oh, what you gonna do now, boo boy? Can't get me up here, huh? Aw, oh, such a sad little... He tumbles back through the air in shock at the dark mass that's suddenly right in front of him, two-toned eyes flashing teeth. Panics immediately after as Rambu goes falling out of the sky like an idiot. But he's gone before he hits the ground reappears crouched on a nearby building's roof, tail whipping behind him as he grins like a crazy person. What the- Fuck, you're insane! Tubbo yells, but there's laughter curling under his words, heart beating fast and excited in his chest, and he dips out of the way as Rambu launches himself across the rooftop, disappearing and reappearing in the blink of an eye and something like awe begins to melt through Tubbo as he zips over buildings. Tubbo's gone up against a lot of interesting quirks over the years, but he's never faced a teleporter before, is really having to try now to keep out of Rambu's reach, pulling aerial maneuvers that he probably shouldn't be doing, but his wound is the last thing on his mind at the moment. Rambu is fast. He's light on his feet and appears to have near-perfect aim dropping himself out of thin air uncomfortably close to Tubbo every time. Finally manages to get him with a feint, popping into existence on Tubbo's left, anticipates he's going to swerve right and is already there, cold palm slapping lightly against his face. Yes! Rambu crows in excitement, falling back through the air with his hair whipping around him, eyes bright and full of so much life. Teeth bared in a victorious smile, and Tubbo feels out of breath, watching him dissolve into purple particles an inch above the rooftop. It's like night and day, Tubbo thinks, pulse hammering in his veins as Rambu appears on a nearby water tank, 
tail curling around behind him like a self-satisfied monkey. Is this who he actually is, underneath everything? Why does he hide it? What's he afraid of? What's the matter? Can't keep up? Rambu snarks, hopping back and forth on his toes. But the impish grin melts off his face as Tubbo winces, drops stutteringly out of the air, one hand clutched to his wound. His feet haven't even touched the roof before Rambu is at his side, hands automatically reaching out for him. Uh, are you okay? What's wrong? Where does it hurt? S see, I knew this was a bad idea, but, but you're so impossibly stubborn and- Tag! Tubbo screeches, slapping at his reaching hands, and launches himself back into the air, streaking off with a mad laugh as Rambu screams behind him. Y you! I- Get back here! Tubbo does not get back here. He beats his wings faster, trying to get out of Rambu's range, but he has to duck fast when his antenna pick up a movement on his right. Dives just in time for the long streak of Rambu's body to go sailing past overhead. His breathing is loud in his own ears, air rushing past as he just barely manages to keep ahead of Rambu. A dull, throbbing pull radiating out from his wound, but Tubbo doesn't care laughs out of breath and loud when he feels a hand snag at his ankle, when he hears excited trilling. Chasing after the swishing line of Ronbu's tail, Tubbo can't remember the last time he had this much fun. Slips his eyes closed and spins in a tight barrel roll just for the hell of it, just to feel the cold wind weaving through his hair and hitting his face, the rush of life singing through him like engines humming out in deep space. Rambu drops onto the next flat rooftop they come across, feet faltering a bit as he stumbles to a stop, panting hard, but he's smiling, wild and unrestrained, skips back a few steps when Tubbo lands, similarly winded. They stalk around each other in slow circles, both on the tips of their toes, waiting to see what move the other is going to make, and Tubbo dives for him just as Rambu winks out of existence. It's something like a dance. How they step around each other, a push and a pull. Ronbu darting away, but Tubbo's always a few paces behind, pursuing him more doggedly than he's done with some missions. Hyper-focused on wherever Ronbu is, like he's the only thing that matters in the whole galaxy. And it's not just him. Ronbu's eyes never leave his, pupils wider than he's ever seen, watching Tubbo for the slightest shift in expression, in his body, is able to read him better than Tubbo would have ever guessed stays just out of reach like he's got a wiretap in his head and knows where he's going to be before Tubbo can move. The next time Ronbu disappears, Tubbo closes his eyes and focuses entirely with his antenna, can pick up the faintest vibrations in the air, people talking in the street below, where are you? The thrum of engines whirring far above him, know you're there, heart hammering loud under his skin, Know you anywhere. There. A whisper of something. Pressure compounding like a black hole. Making his antenna tingle. And Tubbo doesn't think. Hurls himself backwards with a snap of his wings. Crashes into Ronbu as he reappears. Sends them both tumbling over in a tangle of limbs. It's not the most graceful maneuver. Knocks them flat to the rooftop. And while Tubbo's fall is softened by landing on Ronbu... The sudden weight of Tubbo on him, combined with hitting the rooftop, punches a wheezing sound out of his chest, and Tubbo quickly rolls off him, stammering. S sorry sorry He really thinks Rambu's going to start fussing at him, which, fair. But his breathing just picks up, chest jumping in silent spasms. Tubbo worries he's having, like, an asthma attack or something, because wouldn't that just be his luck? But then he hears it the faintest giggling that builds and builds until Rambu is howling with laughter. Eyes squinted shut where he's tipped his head back. There's a dark flush across his cheeks and the bridge of his nose, hair windswept and splayed out behind him, and he looks more real and more alive than Tubbo's ever seen. The great booming cackles of his laugh suffused with such giddy joy that Tebo finds his own giggles slipping free without his consent. He flops back on the roof, abdomen jumping under his hands while he laughs. Feels his muscles relax, 
a heavy, pliant feeling pinning him down, and he grins muzzily. Immuna's sun is high in the sky, shrouded by its ever-present cloud cover, and Tubbo tucks two arms behind his head, sighs as he feels the sweat cooling on his skin, and enjoys the contentment sweeping through him like solar winds. His side is protesting a little, but he feels good, body enjoying a real meal and a fun workout, happiness coursing through him like honey wine, and he thinks a little absently that he wishes every day could be like this, when a chilly weight settles around one of his legs. Tebo props himself up in confusion, eyes going wide at the sight of Ronbu's tail loosely draped over his ankle, curled back around so its fluffy tip is batting a little at his knee, turns to look at him in bafflement. He's facing away, head resolutely turned to the side so Tubbo can't see his face, but his arms are wrapped tight around his chest like he's waiting for Tubbo to say something, to kick his tail off and yell at him. Settling back down with a huff, Tubbo doesn't miss the way Ronbu tenses, ears pinned nearly flat to his head. But they shoot up when Tubbo shuffles closer, when he very slowly, very deliberately, moves his right leg to hook their ankles together. Hesitantly, Rambu's tail wiggles through the new gaps it makes, effectively coiling around Tubbo's calf like a snake. And Tubbo hums happily, scoots just a tad bit closer until their shoulders almost brush until he can hear Ronbu's quiet breathing. And even though his head is turned away, Tubbo can see the way Ronbu's cheeks lift in a smile. An excerpt from the Declassified Galactic Survival Guide Anwa likes to present itself as a unified front. One planet, one people, all enjoying the wealth and benefits to being the single largest arms dealer in the galaxy but your author very deliberately uses the word front, because that's what it is. A story. A lie. About as thin as your sheet of standard cardboard. The wage disparity between the differing social classes on Anwil is staggering, with your average labourer struggling to put food on their table in stark contrast to stepping into Voidfall Palace, which is like descending into the realm of a mythical being. The absolutely astonishing amount of wealth on display mind-boggling and, frankly, a little frightening. But this gap is only apparent if you, A, for some insane and insensible reason have travelled to Anwil, and B, have somehow managed to garner an invitation into the royal palace, which is nigh unheard of. And the only reason your author can say with any certainty what Voidfall's interiors are like is not because they snuck in under guise of being a scullery maid. I have said what I needed to say, as per my lawyer's instructions, and now, continuing on. To the universe, though, Anwil and the Ender are a cohesive unit, might as well be a single entity, what with how all the Ender are near identical, all possessing extreme height and overall noodliness, dark of hair and skin, and horns and tongues and any other bits only splash of colour being their vibrant green eyes, making them one of the most homogeneous species in the galaxy. And this is where problems begin to arise, because the wider universe cannot separate in their minds Ender from stupid large sums of money, and most enterprising bandit groups and other such institutions of loose morals and empty pockets will just see the green eyes and black horns as ransom credits filtering into their account. Which brings us nicely to your author's point, which is not racist, and my editor can go fling themselves into the sun for suggesting as such. But it's to take extreme caution when travelling with any companion from Anwil. Know that you have automatically painted a very large target on both of your backs. As always, your author does say this to scare you, and recommends you continue to keep your blasters cocked and ready. Oh, shit. Tubbo gasps when they get back to the Asachi sometime late in the afternoon. Stares at the only crate he doesn't recognize sitting in the cargo hold, and immediately turns around. Fuck! I, I totally forgot! 
I need to go pay... Shit, what's his name? Damn it, I'm a moron. He pulls up short at the hand that threads through the crook of his elbow, looks back over his shoulder to see Ronbu staring at him, unimpressed, with his mismatched eyes. Do you really think they would have left your parts if you hadn't paid? Well, no, but... Exactly. It's already been taken care of, so you, um, you don't need to worry. Ronbu says, letting his hand drop, eyes darting off to the side. And Tubbo's brain is a little sluggish, tired after all the day's activities, but he eventually puts two and two together, and his mouth drops open. D did you pay for my pots? I, well, yeah. I know you really needed them, and it's not a big deal anyway. They weren't expensive or anything, so... Rambu shrugs, hands twitching like they want to fold behind his back or grab onto something, clearly nervous over how Tubbo's going to react, as if he was going to have any reaction other than gratitude. I'm sorry, Tubbo thinks, stepping up slowly. I'm sorry for whatever happened to you places a cautious hand on Ronbu's arm and gets him to snap his head down. But you don't need to be afraid of me. He smiles warm and real and kind. Thank you. I... I... You didn't have to, and it was really considerate of you. And don't worry, I'll pay you back. No need. Ronbu murmurs drifting closer like he's a moon caught in a gravitational field, eyes darting all over Tubbo's face, seems to steal himself before asking in a whisper, Um, do you need any help installing it? It feels like it's more of a big deal than it sounds, but Tubbo knows better than to draw attention to it, has enough experience to recognize the look in Ronbu's eyes right now. The most baseline reaction for dealing with things you're unsure of, fight or flight. So Tubbo huffs, tries to keep it light as he tilts his head and waggles his eyebrows. Oh, I could always use an extra set of hands. Sees the exact moment Ronbu gets the joke, as his eyes crinkle up, and he turns to the side, tries to cover up his giggling snort with a cough. Under threat of serious bodily injury, Tubbo is forbidden from carrying the transmitter box up the ladder, watches Ronbu load it up into his arms and vanish in a spray of purple, hears an answering thud and an indignant squawk from the top deck a few seconds later. You all right? Tubbo calls up the ladder, has a pretty good idea as to what happened, and tries to keep the laughter out of his voice, muffles his snicker in his collar when Ronbu petulantly calls back, y Yeah. Ow, ow, ow. Uh, yeah, I'm fine. Did you hit your head? It's quiet for a second longer than it should be. And Tubbo's got tears in his eyes. He's trying so hard not to burst out laughing. Loses it, though, once Ronbu whines. No? He's careful, scrabbling up the ladder then. Pops his head through the hole in the floor and coos over where Ronbu's rubbing at his forehead. And he rolls his lips back to bare his fangs though the image is somewhat ruined by the pitiful look in his eyes. Aw, poor baby man, Tubbo sings, swinging himself up with only mild protests from his side, and Rambu bites out a string of echoing words that has Tubbo tutting at him. You know, it still counts as swearing even if I can't understand you. Eat a dick. Tubbo collapses back with an over-exaggerated gasp, two hands clutching at his heart, and the others at his forehead. Ah! My angel swore at me! I... What? Rambu chokes out around a loud bark of laughter, and Tubbo gleefully adds another little tally to the mental scoreboard he's decided to start keeping, pride flaring warm through him since this is the third time he's gotten Rambu to laugh today. It's a really nice sound, sonorous and bright, and full of so many excited things. And it's a shame he doesn't do it more. But Tubbo has resolved to change that. Takes great joy in trying to weasel reactions out of him. He keeps cracking jokes and saying stupid shit as they unload the new transmitter. 
taking note of what makes Rambu snort and roll his eyes, what has him giggling into a palm, which jokes cause his eyes to scrunch up, what makes him lose it entirely, shoulders quaking while he laughs until he can't breathe. They bump shoulders and generally get in each other's way, trying to navigate the cramped quarters of the cockpit. But it's nice, having another person there, even if Ronbu's horns poke buttons and throw switches constantly. He freezes every time he touches something accidentally, only stops when Tubbo rakes his hands down an entire panel, effectively fucking up everything, but it's worth it, because Ronbu relaxes by his side tails stroking along the ends of his wings. Together, they wrench out the old transmitter from the dash, and Tubbo lays all his tools out on the floor, points at each one, and tells Rambu the name of it, only once, doesn't bother fighting the smile off his face the first time he asks for something, and is passed the correct thing with no hesitation. Swapping out the transmitter isn't a hard repair, and Tubbo doesn't really need Rambu's help, but he's happy to have it anyway feels like something tight and unpleasant eases out of him when he makes comments and receives responses, when he reaches back for a tool and fingertips brush his, when he hears another voice joining his humming along to the music trickling out of the speakers. The new transmitter is in before he knows it, and Tubbo crawls out from under the dash, wipes his hands clean on his pants, and crosses the fingers of his lower hands as he powers the Asachi on. Well, Fingers crossed, boss man. Lights blink up on the dash, the HUD starting screen flicking over the viewport as everything begins its boot-up process. And Tubbo taps around the controls, chewing absently on one thumb while he waits to see if they've got signal. Pumps his fists in the air as the bar fills up green. Oh, fuck yeah! Up top! He calls, spinning around to slap two of his palms into Ronbu's and is a little surprised when he moves to also high-five Tubbo's lower hands, like he doesn't want to leave them out. And it's small and stupid and a silly thing to get worked up over. But Tubbo does. He was so wrong in his earlier assumptions. Rambu's not horrible. He's actually a really kind person. A stupid, silly goofball that cares a lot more than he lets on. And Tubbo doesn't know everything, but he's picked up some of it knows that there's got to be something digging at him. It's not an excuse for him to act how he does sometimes, but Tubbo gets it, knows what it's like to have parts of your mind tainted and darkened, understands that it's a hard thing to struggle against by yourself, and out here, with just Tubbo and no way to contact his friends and family, Rambu's probably been feeling really alone. And Tubbo's always had a soft heart, especially for those that care about others, for people that give of themselves without asking for anything in return. And honestly, anyone that looked at the stars the way Ronbu does, with naked love and depthless appreciation, will always have a piece of his heart. It's not so weird, all of a sudden, seeing Ronbu perched on the armrest of the co-pilot seat, eyes tracking over all of the controls, likely memorizing them just because he can and thinking, you're my friend. Hey. Tubbo says softly, to get his attention, smiles at how easily he looks at him, nothing but fond light in his eyes. Do you want first call? I know your parents are probably worried sick. That warm light is gone instantly, as Rambu goes still, body locking up around him, but it's not his usual shutting down. He's absolutely tense this time, jaw ticking back into something that looks painful, eyes emptying faster than Tubbo's ever seen. And it's like having whiplash watching it happen. I, I... Rambu starts and stops, only movement coming from where his claws flex into his palms, digging in hard enough his hands shake a little. No, that wouldn't be very polite of me. I am more or less a guest here, after all, and I must insist that you go ahead and contact your family. Please excuse me a moment, I should really probably freshen up. He's gone before Tubbo can get another word in, disappearing to the bathroom without so much as a single faltering step, 
and it rumbles like thunder in the deathly quiet of the Asachi as the sliding door closes behind him with a hiss. What in the world? Where did that even come from? He was fine literally a few seconds ago, bopping his head back and forth to the music and humming along. And Tubbo didn't say anything weird, didn't try complimenting him or try diving into personal questions. All he did was ask if Rambu wanted to call his parents first, and... Oh. Unease twists in his gut, like the lurid swirl of gasoline, and Tubbo stares down at his hands cradled in his lap, thinks he's starting to understand, but he really doesn't want to. Tells himself he's reading too much into things, and distracts his racing thoughts with opening up the comm lines, a long list of missed transmissions filling the viewport. His heart seizes, seeing all the incoming calls from Tommy that never connected. Feels his handheld vibrating spastically as it starts getting delayed messages. Swallows past the dryness in his throat as he scrolls through the list. Doesn't even know where to start. Since Osiren knocked the transmitter down on the 45th, there are 11 missed calls from Tommy alone, most of them containing a voice memo that Tubbo's hands shake over pressing play tabs violently out of the first voicemail once Tommy's frantic, tear-filled voice echoes out of the speakers. Tebo is hitting redial before he can even really think about it, teeth biting hard into the pad of his thumb while he waits for the call to connect. A few agonizing seconds of anticipation that end with a synthetic voice telling him to leave a message, and Tebo growls, hanging up, and tries again. He goes through the same process about four more times, getting increasingly more strung out and frustrated the longer it takes. Closes out of his latest attempt with more force than necessary, slams his feet on the ground and snarls, Queens, damn it! Calm down, it's fine. It's fine, he's probably just busy, it's okay. And Tubbo scrubs two hands across his face, suddenly very aware of how tired he is, how much his body hurts, or he's done with you. Sick of your shit. Sick of the disappearing and the drama. He bows his head, furious stinging in his nose and eyes. Why did you think he'd ever wait for you? When have you ever done anything for him? All you do is cause problems. You're wrong, you're wrong, you're wrong. Tubbo yells back at the nasty little voice. The one that stands behind him with an iron grip on his shoulders. He promised me. He snarls defiantly. But the voice comes back, this time curling like smoke and embers and gilded speeches that hide ugly truths. People change their minds. You did, after all. Fumbling his handheld out of his pocket, Tebo stares at his own warped reflection in the dark screen, clicks it on so he can pretend like he doesn't see the water droplets dripping down onto it. A notification pops up immediately. That reads, 32 unread messages from Dickhead. And Tubbo hesitates long enough that the bubble disappears, and he has to shakily navigate his messaging app himself. Squinting his eyes closed as he clicks on Tommy's name, his mind whirls fast with the worst possible outcome. Tiny, bolded words spelling out how much Tommy hates him, has always hated him, blames him for everything. But Tubbo breathes in, tries to remind himself that Tommy promised him forever, slits his eyes open, and begins to read. From Dickhead. 11 45 Fucking hell, please be okay. For the love of creators, please, please, please be okay. I know you're probably busy flying and shit, but message me as soon as you can. Creators, I know you can do this, but fuck, please be okay. I love you so much. Fuck, I know I never say it enough, but I do love you, Tubbo. Please message me back. Please be okay. 11-46-2341 Hey, are you okay? I'm really worried about you. Fucking shit. Creators, I can't do this. 11-47-2341 Tubbo, you better not be ignoring me, you shithead. I'll spam you every hour until I have to go to PT this afternoon. Fact. You fucking suck, and I don't like you, and I totally used your old bunk to have insane sex on. How do you like that, b-boy? Fact. 
Jack is the worst roommate ever, and if it wouldn't make me lose my commission, I'd fire him from a photon cannon into the nearest sun. Hey, does your organization need any super sexy navigators by chance? Fact. You remember Joseon from our year? The little bitch with the purple teeth? Yeah, he flunked out. Thought that'd make you smile. I hope you're okay. 11 48 2341. Hey, just checking in again. I bet you're just off doing really important things. Or, you know, maybe hiding the body of that dickhead you were carting around. I won't judge if that's what you're worried about, promise. Just talk to me. Say something. Anything. Please. I don't care. I... Message me when you can. 11-49-2341 Hey. I... I miss you. But I'm starting to think you're not coming back. 11-50-2341 Hey. I don't really know if you're even alive... If you're going to get this, but just in case, I'm going to be gone the next week. They're taking us on our first off-planet training exercises, so no handhelds. You know how it is. I really hope I'll hear from you when I get back, because fuck. What am I going to do without you? See you on the other side, Tubbo. The handheld clatters out of his slack fingers, and Tubbo hunches forwards, fists his hands in his hair, and cries back jerking with the effort at keeping it down. No, he isn't alone like he so desperately wants to be right now. Tommy thinks he's dead. Tommy thinks he's dead. And a whimper escapes out of his clenched teeth because Tommy's going to keep thinking that for a full week, trapped on some shit-ass imperial cruiser where he won't have a second of alone time. Sliding out of his chair... Tubbo's trembling hands skitter after his discarded handheld, screen still open to his chat log with Tommy, and he frantically begins typing where he's leaning up against the bottom of the pilot's chair. To Dickhead. 11-51-2341. I'm okay. Fuck, I'm so sorry. So, so, so sorry. Osira knocked out transmitter and just got replacement. Asachi got damaged, and we had to land on some stupid shithole planetoid so I could fix it. Made it to Immuna, but then I got sick, but don't worry, I'm okay now. Boo took care of me. Fuck, I'm so sorry, Tommy. Like, Queens, you have no idea. I'm so sorry. I put you through all of this. Gonna call in just a sec, but shit, I'm so sorry. Taking a few deep breaths, Tubbo clutches his hand held to his chest and hiccups quietly wipes his sleeve across his eyes to scrub the last of the tears away, and gets to his feet. He settles back in his seat and goes through the motions of calling Tommy, tucks his other hands into his sleeves while he waits to be sent to voicemail, pushes out a shaky exhale when the voice tells him to leave a message. Hey, it's me. Is all he gets out in a normalish tone before the tears are back pooling hot over his lashes and running down his face like molten rock. Fucking Queen's past. I'm so sorry, Tommy. So, so, so sorry. I never wanted to make you worry like that. Fucking hell. Tebo buries his face in his palms and has to take a second doesn't care that his stuttering inhales are probably being recorded for Tommy to listen back to. We're okay, though. Promise. I... Shit. Everything's been horrible, but I'm okay. I'm so sorry for making you think I wasn't... Sighing, Tubbo picks his head up and cups two hands around the back of his neck other two picking at loose strings on his jacket while he stares morosely at the timer ticking up, desperation burning in him like a supernova. I... Fuck. I know you won't get this until later, but I'm going to find some way to come see you. Promise. Fuck the Empire and fuck my warrants. They can suck my dick for all I care. It would just be cruel mentioning he's going to be on Nerox and shit in like 12 hours because by the time Tommy gets this Tubbo will be long gone and he doesn't want both of them to be tortured with the knowledge of what could have been Tubbo's determined though 
He's going to find some way back to Nirox so they can see one another. Reassure that the other is alive and okay and in one piece. I'm really sorry, Tommy. I I'm so sorry. He says softly, fingers digging in harshly at the back of his neck. Uh, I've got to go. Techno's going to fucking kill me, and I still have to drop off Rambu. I love you so much. I... I understand if you're mad at me for putting you through all this, but just... I mean, I understand if you want to, you know, but I'll see you around. He woodenly disconnects and sits in the ringing silence for a minute, a couple straggler tears rolling down his face, tickling under his chin as they make their way down his neck, get lost in the red collar of his bomber. Tubbo thuds his head back into his headrest and shoots air out of his nose, trying to quell the trembling in his limbs. Knows he really has to call Techno, but doesn't want to look like an absolute wreck when he does it. Once he can breathe evenly for a few seconds, Tubbo slaps two palms into his cheeks and shuffles himself up straighter as his other hands pull up Techno's personal line, waits with anxiety churning in his gut like chemical fires for the call to connect. It picks up faster than he was expecting. The standard avatar profile image resolving into a warmly lit office, a nonplussed looking Technoblade sitting behind his desk. Think. Fuck. I was really starting to think I was going to have to notify your next of kin. Pay out your ream and balance, things like that. Do you have any idea how much paperwork that involves? I'd be buried up to my eyeballs for days. Sorry. Tebo mumbles, ducking his head. Thinks he's getting bitched out, but Techno just keeps going, rambling on about paperwork and other tedious things to the point that Tebo glances up cautiously. Heart twisting into knots when he sees how tight Techno's hands are wrapped around his biceps. Relief clear in his eyes. Dark bags stark underneath them. So anyway, thanks for saving me a lot of trouble, I guess, by not being dead or whatever. Techno huffs. Shrugs like he couldn't care less. But the movement unwinds some of the stiffness from his posture. And Tubbo sniffs, flicks him a tremulous salute. You know me, boss man. Always consider it. Heh, <laughs> yeah. Techno reclines in his chair, arms folded a lot more loosely across his chest as he arches an eyebrow. Well, you better have one hell of a story or I want a refund. So Tubbo fills him in, about Osiren and the emergency landing, how he's been trying to find a new transmitter, Leaves out the bits where he almost died from an infection in the wound that Techno's been on his ass about since he got shot. Doesn't mention how Ronbu took care of him, nor their impulsive game of tag, or any of the quiet little moments he's found in between. It's during his long, rambling explanation that Tubbo remembers he's actually on an escort mission from the king of an entire fucking planet. Bites his tongue hard at the thought of how much shit Techno must have caught when Tubbo disappeared off the grid with the king's fucking son. You just make everything worse, cause problems for everyone around you, the no-good fuck-up. And Tubbo tucks his legs up under him, curls into as tight a ball as possible, massaging at his temple. A anyway, that's about it. Sorry the mission's gotten so derailed. I, I know it's probably caused a lot of trouble for you, I'm real sorry about that. I mean, not really. I didn't have to do any paperwork, so... Techno says, waving a hand nonchalantly in the air, and Tebo furrows his brow, because that doesn't make any sense. He... he has to be mistaken. How has this not been a problem? Rambu's parents haven't heard from him in days. They have to have been contacting the syndicate incessantly trying to find him. It's not... They had to have been... Techno just isn't understanding him, that's all. Because there's no way that Rambu's parents haven't been frantic since he disappeared. That they haven't been scouring space looking for him. How could they not? He's their son. Th they're his parents. They're supposed to... But at the back of Tubbo's mind, the pieces are knitting themselves together into an understanding he doesn't want. 
and it's Ronbu freezing like he's expecting an attack. You want first call? How fast any personality he had is disappearing from his face, like he's afraid someone's going to see his emotions. Your parents are probably worried sick. Like he's afraid someone is going to use that to hurt him. And it feels like Tubbo's heart is disintegrating out of his chest. I... Wh I'm like a week late in dropping off Ron... His Highness. Isn't... Aunt, d didn't the king or whatever, like, call you or something? Please let me be wrong. Please let it be nothing. There's no way it shouldn't be like this. He's their son. Uh, no. Techno draws out in a murmur, eyes flicking off to the side as he starts pulling stuff up on his other screens, grunts, and rests a hand on his chin. Yeah, I got nothing from anyone on Anwell, huh? Yeah, yeah, that is a little weird. Maybe they have him chipped or something? Maybe. Tubbo agrees in a whisper, but it's bullshit and he knows it. Caught up in memories woven together in a new light, and he hates it. Makes him furious, seeing this ugly, obvious thing standing out like the nastiest of truths. Are you even listening to me? Rambu screams at him, and it's not because he's angry. Tense line of his body, he never stops talking, like he's trying to fill up empty space, like he's trying to prove he's there. And Tebo's eyes slip closed, head falling back against his chair. Shadow on the wall, not even there. Doesn't matter, never did. Achingly empty hole in his chest because it's Ronbu whispering, it's nothing, where he lay is delirious and out of his mind. But that's not what he really means. I'm nothing. Tebo slowly opens his eyes sees Techno watching him with a pinched face, and he doesn't know everything. Hasn't heard it, hasn't seen it. But he's been at this game for a while. Knows what to look for, and Tubbo can tell he's starting to get it. Like Tubbo's gotten it. There is no one on Anvil biting their nails waiting for a call to come through. And it feels like he's gonna throw up. I should probably go. Tubbo says slowly, frigidness seeping into his body, crackling in his chest cavity and threatening to shatter his bones. And Techno sighs, nods his head a few times. Yeah. Let me know when you get to Nerox, all right? And Tubbo? He stops where his hand was hovering over the disconnect. Feels like the air is stolen out of his lungs with the way Techno is looking at him. All hard lines of resignation and concern. Just... Don't get too attached, okay? He says, scrubbing a hand through his unbound hair, fluffing it up in the back so it sticks out weird. I... It might not be what you think, so... Just... Yeah, but let him know that... We're always hiring. Try not to get almost exploded by a star this time, yeah? Talk to you soon. Techno cuts the call from his end and Tubbo is left alone with the restless energy to move burning through him. He lurches to his feet, unease spiraling in his core like the sweeping bands of light being consumed by a black hole, staggering pressure mounting as he makes to head out of the cockpit and freezes in place. Ronbu standing in the open doorway, but it's not his Ronbu. The one that sat barefoot with him in the dirt and talked about the stars with such passion. The one that played tag with him and shyly curled his tail around Tubbo like he was afraid of doing anything more. The one that laughed until he cried over dick jokes and idiot stories. The one that smiles real and alive and unrestrained. No, this is the prince. Gold glittering from his ears and capping his horns. Haughty expression on his face condescension souring his two-toned eyes, end crystals shining from his clothes and glowing ominously from the circlet on his head. The one Tubbo hasn't seen in days now, forgot it even existed, as he stares at it wide-eyed. Never seen something look so out of place before. If you're done, I think I'd like to call my father now, Rambu says in a clipped tone, and even his voice is different. 
backslid into the cold, frozen one he first used when they met on the landing pad, and something in Tubbo's chest shakes loose. You don't have to do this. He bites out, fingers clawing harshly into his palms, anger and concern and sorrow roaring through him like a fire out of control. How could they do this? How could they? They're your family. And Tubbo has to take a steadying breath, whispers, not with me. I... What are you getting at? Rambu snaps, jerking his head back and making all of his earrings swing, like chains on manacles. And Tubbo sighs sadly, looks up at him and wishes he didn't understand like he does. You know what I mean. Rambu's eyes jump around his face, mask cracking a little, and his brows curve inwards, mouth pulling to the side as he begs quietly. Can you give me a minute? Alone, please. Okay. Yeah, okay. No problem, Boo. Tubbo murmurs, ignores the sharp inhale, and moves to step past him, pauses with their feet on either side of the other, like stair steps, like some strange puzzle with only two pieces, lays a hand on his arm and offers, I'll be outside. I'm not leaving you, is what he hopes Rondu hears. Thinks he understands him when there's the briefest flick at the back of his wings, like he's checking to make sure Tubbo is real, that he's there. Hesitates like he doesn't want him to leave. But Rambu pulls back first, edging further into the cockpit with an absent nod. Tubbo slides down the ladder and tries to block out the sound of a call waiting to connect the faint chiming fading away as he steps out of the Asachi, but it still hasn't picked up by the time he reaches the end of the cargo ramp, and Tubbo rakes a hand through his hair. Fucking hell. Rampu's a good person. He's ridiculously smart and driven, has a good head on his shoulders, is really kind and compassionate, probably doesn't have any open warrants under his name. What parent wouldn't be stupid proud of him? shower him in affection and the praise he kind of clearly deserves. In comparison, Tubbo's a bit of a fuck-up. Has made a few really stupid, really bad choices, but his mother still tells him she loves him, sends care packages to HQ when she can, and expects him home at the holidays. Make sure he knows he's important and good and not defined by his mistakes. Family is supposed to be there for you. They're supposed to love you and protect you. And it isn't confined to blood. Tubbo's found his share of family over the years. First on Nerox, in vibrant laughter and speckled wings. And now with the syndicate, sharp grins and warm hearts and itchy trigger fingers. Family isn't. They're not supposed to do whatever it is they did to Ronbu. Did they ignore him? Turn their backs and not answer his questions? Is that why he's so desperate when he thinks no one is listening? Why he acts like he has to be on his best behavior for Tubbo to even talk to him? Did they tell him to shut up whenever he'd ramble about the universe? Taught him to keep his interests to himself? Slowly walling off who he actually is? Burying it under whatever it is he thought they wanted from him? How could they? How could they? He's their son, their brother, Someone to them. How could they just abandon him? And it makes Tubbo furious. Sits burning in his heart. The frantic, wild conviction to never take Rambu back there. Because no one deserves that. Let him know we're hiring. Whispers in Tubbo's head. As he flops down at the edge of the ramp. Fingers picking at loose grit in the pavement. It comes to him then. The unbidden, intrusive thought of Ronbu with a grey and orange jacket spread across his shoulders. And Tubbo flexes his palm out flat against the ground. Pressing hard enough, little bits of stone cling to his hand when he pulls it up. It'd look good on him, he thinks, watching the tiny dark pebbles drop one by one to strike against the earth, flying off in a dozen directions. A better fit than that stupid crown than all that fucking gold he wears. 
Tebo's unoccupied hands briefly check around his wrists out of habit. Always, always paranoid to find gold bands stitched on the ends of his sleeves. And he hasn't worn that jacket in rotations. But sometimes, it still feels like they're there. Branded into his skin like a set of manacles he can never get rid of. Twisting to look over his shoulder back at the Asachi, at whatever conversation is happening inside its walls, Tubbo wonders if Rambu feels the same. Like he's trapped. No way out, nowhere to run. Spreads a palm out over the insignia on his shoulder and wonders if maybe he just needs to know he has somewhere he can go. You said you'd never ask anyone else. A snide voice hushes from the back of his head. And Tubbo wraps two of his arms around his abdomen, shakes his head because he knows that. And giving Rambu an out isn't the same as asking him to be his partner. But there's something so inherently wrong to him, picturing Rambu standing by some faceless so-and-so's side. It's selfish and terrible, because Tubbo won't ask him, can't. But he also doesn't want Rambu flying out with anyone else. Queens, he wants... And Tubbo hunches over, digs fingers into the back of his neck because he shouldn't be thinking this. He promised himself, promised Tommy, said there'd never be anyone else, and what's wrong with him anyway? They barely know each other. But they do, they do, they do. Have already saved each other once apiece, and careful hands cleaning out infection won't let anything happen to you, promise. And merciful queens, but he wants... Tabo's head jerks up, hearing boot heels click down the ramp behind him, scrambles to his feet, and turns to see Ronbu walking towards him. Hey, d did everything work okay? But he doesn't act like he heard, striding past Tubbo, who has to step quickly out of his way or get run over, dark cape billowing behind him like an ominous cloud. And that might as well be answer enough. Tabo's heart twists painfully and he lunges forwards, hooking one of his hands around the crook of his elbow, gets Rambu to come stumbling to a stop as he murmurs, You all right? Of course. Is there anything I can help you with? Rambu says, perfectly even, but under Tubbo's hand, he's tremoring faintly. A deep-seated shake he's mostly managing to control. Back ramrod straight and unnaturally still and Tubbo pushes his mouth to the side. What happened? Hmm? Oh, nothing. I just spoke with my father. It honestly doesn't concern you. Rambu says, like it's a line he's rehearsed, finally twists and regards Tubbo with one empty eye. Now if you could kindly let go, I would appreciate it. Normally, Tubbo wouldn't hesitate dropping his hand, but he's got a gut feeling Leaving Rambu alone right now is not a good idea. Loosens his hold, but doesn't let go. Steps a little closer. I... I will if you really want me to, but I... Don't think that's what you need right now. And what, exactly, do I need? Rambu seethes. Face still completely blank, but his shaking has gotten more noticeable. Rattling his earrings around and jostling Tubbo's hand and Tubbo brushes his thumb back and forth over the glittering material of his shirt, says honestly, I just, I think you need someone to be there for you, to, to help you not feel so alone. I am not alone, Rambu hisses, spinning around so it knocks Tubbo's hand loose, ears flicking back as he curls his claws into his palms, and Tubbo looks up at him sadly, murmurs, Aren't you? Rambu jerks back like he's been struck, mask fracturing for just a second, and Tubbo knows he's nailed it on the head, seeing the absolute distraught that pulls his face down before it's gone again, neatly tucked back under the surface of apathy. Don't project your feelings onto me. Just because you're sad and pathetic doesn't mean everyone else is. Rambu snaps, balled up fists dropping to his sides, and he's trying so hard to seem callous. Like he's not affected, but he's backing up a little at a time, running away. And Tubbo steps after him, following along for every step Rondu takes. 
I'm not projecting. I know there's something wrong. I know you. You don't know anything about me. Yes, I do. Tebo insists, makes direct eye contact with Ronbu, and watches panic drip into their mismatched depths. Run, 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 run. In every tense line of his body, because Tebo's not backing down. He's refusing to leave. And his heart breaks because Rambu doesn't know how to handle that. I know you're smart. That you try so hard because you want someone to notice, but they don't. And you're scared that no one will. Rambu freezes. Doesn't look like he's breathing as his eyes go wide. Pupils constricted all the way down into tiny slits. And Tubbo wets his lips, takes another cautious step forwards, and keeps talking. Dick jokes make you laugh. And I know you pretend like they don't. Keep trying to muffle your laughter, and it's a shame, because it's really nice. Your laugh, I mean. The noise Rambu makes in response sounds wounded, like Tubbo's physically hurting him. And Queens, how fucked up has his life been that this is his reaction to compassion? You're kind, and you care a lot. About people. About the galaxy. You have such a big heart, but it's like you're afraid to show it. Don't want anyone to know what matters to you. Tebo sucks in a startled inhale when a nasty thought crawls into his head, but it makes so much sense. And he hushes, mostly to himself. You're trying to protect yourself, that's why you don't want to let them know how to hurt you. No, I'm not. Rambu croaks, blinking his eyes rapidly like he's trying to stave off tears. Air hitching in his lungs as he stammers. You're wrong. You... I... You're wrong. Am I? Then tell me how that call with your father went. Tubbo demands, maybe a bit harsher than he means. But he's starting to get upset, seeing the way Rambu's holding on to his composure by his teeth. What'd he say to you? Was he worried about you at all? Did he even pick up a... His words get lost somewhere in his throat when Ronbu tips his head back and cackles. And it's nothing like earlier, loud and warm and alive. This is sick. It's twisted and angry and sounds like a blizzard howling outside. And everything about Ronbu shifts like he's never seen before. Oh, you think you're so smart, don't you? Think you have me all figured out, hmm? Ronbu croons one hand coming up to lightly rest on his face, and he tips his head to the side, smarmy, sweet expression melting away like ice in a supernova. I'm sure you're real proud of whatever theory you've come up with, but what could you possibly understand about my life when you're just a dirty little nobody with a rap sheet? He's deflecting. You hit too close to home. He doesn't mean it. But it still hurts. Never were going to be anything. Nobody going nowhere. Pricks at Tubbo's heart, like little slivers of metal, like needles. But he doggedly takes another step forwards, says, as calmly as he can, You don't mean that. I know you don't. I do, actually, but see, that's your problem, Tubbo. The way he says his name, it's like slime, like refuse, something disgusting and beneath him. Sit down, shut up. Do as you're told, Enzyme. And Tebo bites his tongue hard, because he can't deal with that right now. And Rambu's eyes narrow like he's figured something out. You can't admit when you're wrong, when you've made a mistake. You just tell yourself you're right until you believe it. There can be no half measures. Do it now. A wicked sharp smile and glasses flashing in the night. And Tebo swallows hard slipping down a slope slicked with fuel and accelerants. How does he know? How does he know? How does he know? How does he know? Forces it down, and says tremulously, Stop it. I know what you're trying to do, but you're just letting them win acting like this. Huh, <laughs> that's adorable. You have a hero complex, don't you? You're just inventing problems to save me from. Rambu simpers. Smiles cruel and scarily real-looking. And Tebo's having trouble picking out what's him and what's the shell, starting to worry because it's getting a little too convincing. 
Is that why you joined Sunfleet in the first place? Because you wanted to go save the universe? Oh, what a sweet, stupid, naive little dream to have. But have you ever actually saved anyone? I, that's not... I'm trying to help you. But the words get lost somewhere down his windpipe. Choked out with the billowing black smoke that pours up his esophagus. Do you trust me? And his hands seize up by his sides. Fingertips tingling like he can feel the prickling of splintery wood against them. It's for the greater good. Do it now. There can be no help. Was it too much for you? All of the rules and regulations, I imagine it was, given where you are now. Rambu cocks his chin up and advances. And Tubbo takes a shaking step back. Heart in his throat, and he can't breathe. Not with those eyes pinned on him. Sit down. Shut up. Do as you're told, Ensign. Take that match, Tubbo. Makes me wonder, though. Why are you where you are? Because with talent like yours, the Admiralty would have been loath to let you go. So that leaves two options. Rambu holds up a clawed finger. Smiles like every horrible thing that crawls out of the night. Eyes wicked and reflecting the light of a fire burning out of control. One, you're a deserter. A coward who couldn't handle the pressure of responsibility. Cut and ran at the first sign of trouble, and isn't that what you're good at, Tubbo? Running. He's wrong. He's wrong, but he's not. Not really. And Tubbo can't seem to get air in his lungs. Sucking in lungfuls of what feels like smoke. Fire crawling up the back of his throat. And he's not a coward. He's not. He's not. He's not. But you ran. A voice whispers, like curling ash and sparking embers. You ran, and you're still running. You think you can leave it behind, but it just comes with you. Or two, you were discharged. Dishonorably, I presume, but really, what else could it be? You fly for the biggest lowlife in the galaxy. A warmongering psychopath. No, it's not... He didn't... He left because he wanted to, not because of... So... How bad is your rap sheet that he's the only one that'd take you in? Printed in neat block letters, cycling on headlines in the newsreels, deep, destroying fear of what have you done? What have you done? What have you done? What exactly did you do? He didn't mean to. He didn't mean to. It was an accident. He didn't know. Flames jump high around them, ring their feet like demonic halos. And in between blinks, Tubbo can see it. The entire shipyard engulfed around them, fire spreading like crazy as it ignites the fuel in engines and over the hissing and shrieking of buckling plastisteel, he can hear it. The screams. Tubbo cries, ragged through his teeth, lower arms curling tight around him while his upper palms clap over his ears, trying to block them out. He didn't know. He didn't know. They didn't. No one told him. He would never have... He didn't mean to... But you did. You did. You did. It was your hand. You took the match. You struck it. And he shakes his head violently, chest heaving like he's going to pass out. Valiantly tries to count breaths, but there's no air here. He's suffocating. Just like all those people you burned alive. Stop! He gasps, tears streaming down his face because this is consuming him from the inside out. He can't see. He can't think. All there is is a too-sharp smile, flashing glasses, an unlit match in one hand and a lit cigarette in the other. The resistance thanks you, Tubbo. And he howls like the damned. Stop! Something touches his arms. They came for him. Of course they did. Slapped chains on his wrists and drug him away. And he panics. Throws it off him with a scream the entire world pulsating reds and oranges around the edges. The fires he can never put out. Tebo hears shoes scuff and jerks his head up, sees a dark shape looming over him, mismatched eyes, one red like hell. He's the devil. He's a monster. Doesn't think. Cocks his fist back and launches it forwards with a shriek. His knuckles connect harshly with flesh, and pain flares out at the contact, a dull thud letting him know he hit something, and hit it hard. 
limbs pinwheeling past him as Ranbu is knocked flat on his ass. Hurt him, hurt him, hurt him. Howls in his mind like a typhoon. But Tubbo can't stop crying, shoulders shaking as he struggles to breathe. He blinks enough tears out of his eyes to see Ranbu sprawled on the ground, horror-struck expression on his face as something dark drips out of his mouth, his voice a broken, croaking wreck. Tubbo, I... Fuck you! He screams, trying to be strong, trying to be angry and intimidating and uncaring. But it sounds more like a wail, and Tubbo's lower lip wobbles and he can't. Spins on his heel with a sob and stumbles back to the Asachi. Hyper-aware, listening for the sounds of pursuit, and relaxes when he hears nothing. Fumbles, closing the cargo bay. The doors grind closed, shutting the light out one millimeter at a time, and Tubbo hiccups uncontrollably. Slides lightheaded down on one of the bulkheads until he's on the floor. Curls up as tight as he can in the muffled darkness. Flames still flickering at the edges of his vision, and he tries to control his breathing. In one, two. Fire climbing high into the night, he can't stop it. Out, one, two. Helpless, scared, what do I do? What have I done? In, one, two. Trying to run, but his legs won't work. Metal cuffs that scorch around his skin. Out, out. He can't. He can't, he can't, he can't. And Tubbo balls, throat clogged with snot, restricting what air he can get into his lungs. And he puts his head in his knees, keeps telling himself he's fine, he's okay. There's air, he can breathe, but it doesn't help. He keens in the back of his throat, wishes Tommy was here, that his mother was, wishes he was home, doesn't want to be here, alone. Wishes there was a tail coiled around one of his legs, barking laughter in his ears, cold hands and mismatched eyes, my friend. Damn it! Tubbo sobs, banging one of his fists into the floor, snarls the others in his hair, and tries to stop thinking. Wishes he could get the smell of burning metal, of flesh, out of his nose. Wishes that things were different, that he didn't have to deal with this. That he hadn't been an idiot, swayed by grand sweeping speeches and a golden tongue that could have charmed the devil himself. He wishes he'd never met Wilbur. An excerpt from the Declassified Galactic Survival Guide The universe is a very large expanse. Continually expanding, actually, so there's never going to be an end. Well at least until the Big Bang runs out of kinetic force and snaps back, like the most humongous and cruelest of rubber bands. Which is going to be terribly inconvenient. But at that point, we'll all cease to exist anyway, though, given the nature of mortal existence, I'm sure someone will manage to file a complaint with the overall higher order regardless. Given our very finite and exorbitantly meaningless lifespans, it's vitally important that we make the most of them. And while some take this as a challenge, pursue a higher calling that will better existence as a whole, like writing a guide to the entire galaxy while trying desperately to keep it pocket-sized for your convenience, it becomes very easy to lose sight of what really matters. Your author would argue that the upper echelons on Anvil have, along with the Sunfleet Admiralty, gotten lost in a pursuit of something that is honestly pointless and does little to benefit existence besides racking up a large number and thinking it means you're better than everyone else, that you're entitled to whatever you want. There is so much more to the universe than credits filing into an account, so many wondrous things scattered across existence that I couldn't begin to hope to name them all, from the infinite solar loop of Gihui Quijelo to the tiny crystal frogonoids on <laughs> Life crawling from many cracks and crevices, and yet... The universe can be a terribly lonely place. What do all the marvels and riches in life matter without someone to share them with? How are we supposed to cope with the terrible facts of being alive if there's no one there to put that commiserating hand on your shoulder? To look you in the eyes and tell you they feel it too. They understand. Honestly, the only thing that truly matters will be what counts the most when that cosmic rubber band snaps back.
and destroys us all like a proverbial fly on the proverbial wall, are the relationships we keep, and who we choose to share our existences with, for the brief time that we have them. And I feel like a lot of people have forgotten this.